Everybody's talking about Britney's book right now, and I'm so happy for her. I believe it's the most selling celebrity memoir of all time, and it just came out. So it is doing numbers, and I want to give you guys my review because I've been in the free Britney movement for a very long time. I mean, I think actually in April 2019 on my old channel is when I first started posting about it. And since then, we've had cease and desist letters. We've had phone calls of Sam Lufty. We've had a lot of different moments. And I want to reflect on what this book means for the movement and some things I took away from the story itself. I also want to include an interview with my friend BJ. I'm going to include clips throughout this video because she was there with me from the jump. We have gone through so much together publicly and privately. She's also a YouTuber. She's a lawyer turned YouTuber. Um, actually, Lou and Taylor, who we'll talk about in a little bit, kind of forced BJ out of her job. So we will talk a little bit about that and how these people have tried to silence Britney, but nonetheless, she prevailed. My first initial reactions to the like the book itself, like the the photo that she used and the title was that the photo's old and I was a little bit like taken back by that because it's you know, it's not giving current and a lot of times we see that Britney's social media they like repurpose old content. So it kind of felt like a little bit disingenuous, but as reading the book, I kind of can see where she's coming from because this story itself talks about her entire life from the beginning through her relationship with Justin Timberlake, through having her children and then into the conservatorship. I was a little bit surprised at how personal she was in the beginning about her family life because we've heard about her grandmother who was sent away to, you know, a, a facility drugged on lithium and then ultimately killed herself. We've heard this story before, but hearing Brittany describe it and the relationship she had with her grandparents, her other grandparents, it was very personal and also telling to how the dynamics between her father and mother worked because her mother came from more of a privileged background and her father did not. He came from a super abusive grandfather and he ended up becoming that same kind of man. As far as Justin Timberlake, I was really shook at how big of a part he was in her life, which probably sounds like really like naive coming from me because like it's Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. They were huge, but I was pretty young back then. You know, I didn't like, I wasn't aware of their relationship and them dating and they were big time. It kind of reminds me of like Victoria Beckham and uh, David Beckham because I just recently watched the Beckham uh, documentary, but they were even bigger than that. And I think it's telling throughout the book. I do think that it's not a good look for Justin and his reputation. I was talking to BJ a little bit about that. And actually I did a podcast episode about his secret daughter. Um, some information about that is coming to light, but I really do think that like Justin is a total a-hole especially because he manipulated her in ways that she just was not even aware of like she was so in love with him back then that she could not comprehend that his mind had this whole other scheme going on where he was going to use her celebrity to his advantage i haven't had my finger on the pulse of people's reaction i mean i think within the britney spears or like the free britney movement or the britney spears fandom it's not a good look for justin i do think like you know if you think about what a book is and what the target audience for a book usually is, I mean, it's a hard copy book that's like in a Barnes and Noble that like maybe someone in the suburbs might pick up and maybe some law firm partner might read. Oh, Britney Spears has a book. And so the general, I'm not sure. I mean, this is speculation, but I don't think like the general Britney, Span, uh, Britney Spears demographic of a fan like that would go to in the zone or something is necessarily the only person who, demographic who's going to be reading this book. And so I kind of took this book to kind of be like for the masses and not really for the fans. Does that kind of like resonate with you or? I mean, there's definitely a lot of context in the book too. Like she added a lot of like timestamps almost. She included like certain songs. So I do feel like it appealed a lot more to the general public. It kind of did remind me of like a documentary kind of setup, especially with how it was like linear the timeline. She didn't really like jump around. As far as mm -hmm. Justin, I mean, I was a little bit... um Taking it back at just like how, I guess, you know, I wouldn't say like Britney was naive because naive kind of has a negative connotation, but like how easily Justin was able to manipulate that situation, manipulate the relationship, cheat on her. I mean, I just did a podcast episode about his alleged other daughter that he had two years after he had Britney give the abortion. Her name's like Iris Ooh. Timberlake. Yeah. If you guys want to like check out that story, I will link. Oh, the I need to check below. that out. I haven't. <laughs> I have not seen. I need to check that out. You said it's on your yeah, podcast? So just, 
Yeah, I just did like an episode about it because it's just so mind blowing to me how he was able to navigate in such a different way than she was. And throughout the book, it seemed like she did authentically really love him. And I feel like she's still kind of like holding on to that anger and that pain. I mean, the entire book, I remember reading a, a review before I actually listened to it and it like described it as like bleak and negative and like angry, which I the review is actually good. But they use mm -hmm. certain words like that. And when I first read that, I was like, oh, no, like, you're not calling the book bleak, are you? But then going into it, I can see why. It, well, it just it is a tragic story. Like, it's very negative. There are some highlights, but really every single person who's included, it's like a bad story about them, whether it's Justin Timberlake or Jamie Lynn Spears being a total bitch at 11. When it comes to this book in general, I do feel that Britney wrote it because it kind of seems like Britney's tone in the way that she would write on Instagram and her captions. But obviously, it's been like edited a bunch. I mean, if I were to try to write a book, I I would need like a whole team to like redo it to make it sound good. But there were some really like poetic like Lana Del Rey parts where everything was super descriptive. And then there were other moments where she used terminology that seemed very Britney. If you follow me on Instagram, you thought this book was going to be written in emojis, didn't you? And then it has these. Oh my gosh, that's cute. I kind of like that. So I didn't actually physically read the book. I listened to the audiobook, which was narrated by Michelle Williams. And honestly, she sounds a lot like Britney. Like when I was listening to it, I kept forgetting that Britney wasn't reading this. And I'm guessing that's the actress within Michelle who's like impersonating Britney's voice and the way that she speaks. But if you guys actually read it, comment below. I feel like I want to read it. I just don't really read books that often. I know that sounds like so bad because I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a green flag when someone reads a book, but I just like, I don't have the patience to read a book so the fact that the audiobook was released at the same time was amazing because i had a like six hour flight to new york and it was five and a half hours i got to listen to the entire thing and honestly i was really taken away i think it was written very well and i do believe that britney wrote it do you so, think that britney did write the book are you entertaining the the notion i kind of think didn't? she did mm -hmm. i mean it kind of no i think she kind of i think she did and also because i think it's written really well there's some very like poetic aspects to it but there's also some parts that kind of feel like an instagram caption where she's like oh you know i, I was a effing idiot or something or you know, certain phrases where it does seem like she wrote it. I think it probably mm -hmm. went through one, two, three, five, six, ten, you know, published like people edited like editors and all these people. I think that there's a lot of people who had their hand in it. It is a very there's parts that are really beautiful. And I think that there's someone who helped with that. But I do think that she actually did write it. And I kind of I'm curious to see like how she presents publicly now that the book's done because i feel like if she has been working on this she's probably been doing it non-stop so maybe we'll see more of her i don't know i'm kind of on the fence because some people are so so adamant that britney for sure did not write this book they're just so confident yeah. about it and it's like i'm not sure how they could be so sure unless they just know on the other hand it does seem like maybe she did put a lot more stuff in this book maybe it was double the length and once mm -hmm. lawyers and publicists and et cetera got through with looking at it and, you know, telling her this could get you sued, this could get you sued or whatever, maybe she just, you know, this is just what we end up with. It does seem like very sanitized. I, I am almost certain that much worse stuff happened that's not in this book. Mm -hmm. I'm almost certain. And so it, it begs yeah. the question, why isn't it in there? Maybe Brittany truly just didn't want to put it out there. Maybe she did. And it was, you know, I don't know not allowed for some other reason someone threatened with a cease and desist i mean you've been targeted with cease and desists from this team you know how they do mm -hmm. and britney did say in yeah. court and in the book she hates court she don't want to go to court she don't want to be threatened with court she just wants to do what she's doing so i think probably most likely it's some combination of that that these original stories did come from britney somehow and they went through a an extensive editing process which is completely common usual and you know industry standard for a celebrity memoir one part i was super excited about was whenever she brought up lou m taylor because lou m taylor has been so problematic threatening me we've protested outside of her building there's been so much history between us all and when i heard that britney had a bunch of pages that were removed from her book i assumed it was lou m taylor's work but lou m taylor and her co-conspirer uh, robin greenhill were both mentioned in the book very often and were accounted for you know creating this conservatorship and keeping it in place and giving britney her drugs with her envelope and it was really validating to hear that lou m taylor was mentioned because this woman has scared me scared my friends um 
And there's just, again, like a lot of history to it. So Liam Taylor is is not good in my opinion and i think in britney's opinion as well and she's got the evidence to back it up i mean even my friend bj she was involved in a lawsuit with some guy that created this website and ultimately she was like well they tried to screw over she won because she is a winner and the, you know i think the good ones win at the end of the day but um Liam taylor i think is using different avenues to try to silence people i don't know if she gave up when it comes to me because i every time i get anything you guys know i rush to my computer and i show it to you and i'm like look at what is going on this is terrible but um at, you know bj actually just went through a lawsuit recently and i really in my opinion i believe that Liam taylor is behind it and even though britney is like dragging her name through the mud she's doing everything to anyone out there who tries to speak on her name and that's just frankly not okay in my opinion so Lou and taylor has threatened not only me but also bj and a lot of other people there's been a lot of history when it comes to this woman trying to hide her you know her trace when it comes to this conservatorship and her involvement did you feel like super validated when you saw that lou was mentioned because i was like <gasps> i like had a actual gasp in the airplane <laughs> I definitely felt super validated when I saw Lou mentioned. I think that the most validated I felt was when Britney or when Britney's Instagram account was posting about Lou Taylor, like right in the contemporary moments of, of like as she had just been out of the conservatorship, out of the conservatorship. I mean, I do think she is out of the conservatorship, legally speaking, but mm -hmm. it does appear as though it's the same kind of like team still around her. And I'm not sure that they're not still using those same control mechanisms against her. I'm not sure that they're not, you know what I mean? But yeah, it was totally validating. There's just something about just getting the truth out and just saying the truth whenever people have tried very hard for you to not be able to say the truth. That just feels empowering. And I'm I'm happy that Brittany, first of all, even knows because it's very hard to even pin down who the mastermind is. It clearly was a whole team of people working together, including lawyers, plural, courts, managers robin. agents yeah robin <laughs> britney refers to robin as a weird ass lackey which <laughs> valid factual tracks let's talk a little bit about the recent lawsuit that you were involved in because it kind of stems from Liam taylor in a weird way so Liam taylor was britney's business manager and she did i mean in my opinion everything she could to try to detach herself from the movement but i mean even britney in her own words she has said that Liam taylor was a big part so um when the first like, you know, when we first started learning about the Free Britney movement and learning about Loom Taylor, there was someone who created a website using Loom Taylor's identity in some way. And ultimately, they wanted to, I believe, expose her, but Loom Taylor wasn't having it and ended up suing this man, correct? That is correct. And so she sued him, like, what, for like a copyright infringement or defamation or? all of it so i don't have the case in front of me from what i remember she sued him uh she's she's based in california and nashville i think so she sued him in the state where he lives which is not california or tennessee i think it was for copyright like he was was it defamation it, i think it was copyright because he had started a website called like lewmtaylor.net or lewmtaylor.com something like that this is just from my memory and mm -hmm. Lou was like, it's confusing because obviously I am my own name and he's got my pictures up here and he's got my information up here. And it might look like I started this website. I think that's how that's what it was. I guess I should have read the, the suit before coming on here. But I, from my memory, that's what it was. There were supposed to be de uh, depositions or something going on. And sort of the day before, this is all free Britney folklore too. This isn't like exclusive mm -hmm. information. This is stuff, if you're in the free Britney movement and you have been for years, then you would have heard about this lawsuit. And mm -hmm. Lou Taylor did sue this person and for using her for using her name in a website. And then the other stuff in the website was like maybe like brand depreciation or something like that. I don't remember what was on the website, but it did appear that this was a Britney Spears fan who was in the Free Britney movement who was trying to come after Lou Taylor and expose her. Well, they ended up settling that lawsuit and there was screenshots circulated that it was for a monetary amount, $20,000 namely. I don't know if Lou paid him the 20. I don't know if he paid her the 20,000. I really don't know. But this person kind of stopped talking about Lou Taylor after the settlement. And people took it to mean that it was because an NDA was signed or like a mutual we won't talk about each other agreement. I have no idea what happened. I've never asked 
And I mean, we, we can see the public court filings, but all this stuff from behind the scenes, we just don't know. That person, when I first started in the movement, he was very nice to me. He was nothing but pleasant with me. We were in group chats together. I mean, we didn't have like extensive conversations or anything, but publicly, you know, parasocially, I thought it was cool. He was in the Free Britney movement, whatever. Well, I don't know, at some point right before Britney spoke or maybe it was right before Britney got free, he just flipped and he didn't just flip on me. He flipped on a lot of the leaders of the Free Britney movement. He was, I mean, it was very scary. It was so scary that the Free the free Britney rally organizers actually hired and paid for security from their own pocket because in part, this person was acting so unhinged and no one really knew why he had flipped like that. Well, fast forward to the November hearing for Britney's case where Britney was actually freed from the conservatorship. It was the biggest rally. We had a parade. I think you were there. I mean, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Well, this person, he showed up to that rally, which he is allowed to do. It, uh, it is a public court hearing. But the way he did it, he showed up alone and it was very menacing. And he had his phone out the whole time. He never talked to anybody that anybody saw. He had his phone out and he was just like smiling and going through the crowd. And this is after he had been attacking us viciously online. And um, I was scared. He's a large man. I am a small woman. I am not prepared to like get in any type of physical confrontation with anybody, but in particular, a large man. So I got my little ticket from the court. I got my place in line and I went back to my hotel room. And that is where I stayed for most of the day. And actually, it hurt my feelings because, I mean, I had worked at that point for like two years in the Free Britney movement for this day. And I couldn't even celebrate with my friends. I mean, I think I even texted you that day. Like, I'm scared to leave my hotel room because this stalk. I saw him. He was like recording. Like, there's. I remember like I like yeah. I remember the recording interaction. And he's a big boy. Like, I'm scared of him too. Exactly. (laughs) He's not small by any means. I mean, it's just a fact. And so, like, even right now, my voice is shaking. Even talking about it, I have a video coming out about Uh, it. But good. But I'm like legitimately, I'm afraid of him. And because he's un, he don't know how to act. It's it's people who's unpredictable. I'm afraid of them because they clearly don't have any logical underpinnings to their ethics, and they'll just do anything. So I hid from him that day, and really like I have some great memories from the Free Britney movement and from the activism. I mean, you're one of my like friends who I met through the Mm -hmm. free Britney movement have lots of friends who I met who are truly my friends. There's all these positives. Britney got freed and we did a movement and it worked and stuff. But like, I have some like dark clouds hanging over me about some of this stuff. And it's like, one of the things that has not sat right with me is that I have intentionally not talked about that lawsuit between Lou and this person, for example, because I'm scared of them. And it's like, Mm -hmm. that kind of goes against like what I'm about. I do not want to be the type of person who could be scared into silence. And that's kind of what was going on. So in early August, I finally said, you know what? I'm ready to talk about it. And I am going to talk about it. So I posted an Instagram post and I was like, the real reason I don't go to rallies anymore is because of this person. He made Uh me afraid for my safety and my life whenever I went there. He followed us around. It's because of him I have nightmares. And now I am ready to talk about it. Well, just a few days after that, this lunatic starts a business. I don't even think I told you this starts a business in Georgia called that surprise witness LLC. And I think that someone's done similar thing to you before. It's like a weird thing that people do to retaliate. So he starts a Uh business called that surprise witness LLC in Georgia, which is very strange because I am that surprise witness. So seems like obsessive stalkerish behavior. And a few days after he starts that business, he attempts to get a restraining order against me. And I think it's all because he doesn't want me talking about this case between him and Lou. He attempts mm-hmm. to get a restraining order against me in August 2023, like a couple months ago, like almost, no, exactly two months ago today, August 25th or no, it was 29th, August 29th, okay. 2023. He tries to get a restraining order against me in Georgia. The court denied it. They said there's no basis for a restraining order. The girl's there's no probable cause restraining order for what Mm -hmm. denies the restraining order. And you know how sometimes when you apply for a restraining order, they'll give you a temporary one. Then you have to go to court and you have to argue about it. And the court will say, no, that temporary one shouldn't even been granted. No. Or yes, the temporary restraining order turns permanent. But a lot of times that's what happens, at least to be safe. The court will grant the temporary. The court didn't even grant the temporary. The court was like, no, didn't even talk to me. Didn't even see me. They were like, you haven't given us any evidence. You need a restraining order. Well, 
this person still wanted to have a hearing, a court hearing, even though he didn't get the temporary restraining order, which I guess by statute he's allowed to do. And um, so we ended up going to court for it. There was some technicalities on the first hearing, so it got pushed off. So two days ago, we finally go to court. I won. It gets dismissed on personal jurisdiction grounds. But even if it didn't get dismissed on personal jurisdiction grounds on the merits, I still would have won because there was no harassment and stalking. Like I've never been around the man except that one time at the hearing where I literally actively avoided being around him because he's large and scary and unpredictable. Yeah. So anyway, it's just another way that activism is being silenced. And in a weird way, it feels like it's in a weird way. It feels like it's Lou kind of trying to do it. I know that's what I was going to say. It seems like it's Lou and Taylor because they had their little buddy buddy moment a few years ago where they settled it out. They worked it out. Maybe now they work with each other. That's all, you know, opinion alleged, but I totally get it. Like, well, he it is definitely like willing to team up with people to get <laughs> I'll just put it this way. He's definitely yeah, willing yeah. to use that route to team up with people. And Lou Taylor also has tried to silence you and me before as well. I mean, she hired my law mm -hmm. firm where I was working right after I graduated law school, took the bar exam, all that. I started working at a law firm two or three months after I started working there. She hired that law firm to represent her in Brittany's yeah. case. And then and then asked my bosses to make me stop making videos about her. I had to quit my first law job ever to keep making videos about Lou Taylor. And now, like, her, like, go. guy she settled with is trying to get fake restraining orders against me based on nothing. It's very strange. Ultimately, I think the book is a hit. I mean, there is no denying that it is doing numbers. I think the, to the, the the regular people out there reading this story, they can understand it. it. It's comprehensive. It goes through her entire life. There are a lot of negative aspects. I was reading, like, reviews that just said that it was, like, so negative it was bleak it was full of anger but i think that britney has this anger inside of her that she's never really been able to express i mean her music in some ways you can see how she's feeling but in other ways it's like this was a raw story of her expressing the just the amount of darkness that she's gone through and even though uh there could have been like you know lighter stories included and there were some about madonna and mariah carey i do think that in general she's shedding light on what it means to be a pop star and to be in these really compromising moments and to have your sanity questioned and to be in that conservatorship i mean hearing that she was in that facility learning about the free britney movement as we were online talking about it and people were calling it conspiracies but then some people were you know really preparing for such a big time in history i mean all those protests and everything they started off with like just a few people and then there were more and then the sheet the streets were shut down and then the sheets oh i can totally eat some sheets right now i'm so hungry if you guys don't know what sheets is it's like a grocery not me going off on a tangent i am actually so hungry i'm in new york i'm gonna go get some pizza after this but um the fact that the streets were shut down and it just developed into something so much bigger and to know that she was watching and she was aware it's just so validating because there were so many times where people were like i remember being at the protest and people were like oh like what are you guys protesting for oh that's stupid oh that's stupid or people saying you know get offline and stop talking about this like she doesn't want your help she doesn't want this but she did and she appreciated it and it meant so much to know that we had a part in her fight it really was her fight that she won but without the movement supporting her she had she was helpless she was she had was defeated she was in these facilities on these drugs questioning herself and we gave her a reason i mean her kids are the reason but we gave her a reason to stand up for herself and we also gave the people who were silencing her a reason to be scared and i'm sure those people working at those facilities were watching the news and questioning what they were really doing to this woman so i'm really proud of this story and i think she should be as well and i i am a little taken back that sam Asgari was written about so fondly i feel like we need like a few extra chapters to like learn about the divorce and really what type of guy he was i mean maybe he was a good guy but i just feel like he kind of has her fooled like you know justin timberlake did back in the day Anyways, I really enjoyed it. I think you guys should go and listen to it if you're not much of a reader. But if you are, definitely go and check it out. Uh, I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you, BJ, for coming on. Definitely go and check out her channels below. I love her insight. I love talking to her. She's just like a good friend and a great creator. There are some creators out here that I've met. And I'm not trying to be like... Ugh. One of those influencer people are like, yeah, and there's some people that suck out here, but there are, and she's like a real life friend. So go and support her and I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.